Hi everyone, I'm Kima from 81 Vintage and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how I take an old cabinet and some IKEA mop drawers and upcycle them into a truly vintage style antique looking apothecary cabinet. I always love to do this type of project on a really sunny day, so I carried out this cabinet into the front garden so that I could begin to work on it. Now doing it in the front garden does mean you will get some funny faces from the neighbours as they walk past and have a good old look at what you're doing. For this project, I am combining four of these IKEA mop cabinets to create an apothecary style cabinet. I picked up this cabinet off Facebook Marketplace for £20. They're super inexpensive and by putting together those four mop cabinets and gluing a little slither of wood in between, it really makes it look like an original built-in piece. Before this, I already pre-painted all of the insides of the drawers black. One of the reasons this cabinet was so cheap was because it was missing some hardware, so it was time to replace those handles. I unscrewed them from the inside and popped them off. I also wanted to cover up the existing holes where the locks were with these vintage style catches. I had them in my stash and so I measured down so that they covered the hole where the lock was and then screwed them in place. The catches wouldn't quite sit flush because there was a little piece of beading on the edge of the doors and so I had to make a little mark with a permanent marker and then chip that out with a chisel. It came off really easy and really simply, and then my catch could sit flush. It always makes it easier to attach screws onto a piece if you pre-drill them with a tiny little drill hole. And I also like to keep hold of a stash of old slot head screws, so anything that I salvage I always keep and then reuse so that it looks much more original. Once the doors were taken care of, it was time to move back to the handles. I marked out where I wanted to put the holes so I could mount these cup handles. The colour of them doesn't really matter at this point because it's all going to get painted. I pre-drilled them, attached them on and then screwed them in from the other side. I also didn't worry about filling the holes that were left by the previous ones at this point because I was going to deal with them shortly. A great pro tip for whenever you're painting is to lift your piece off the floor. That allows you to get right down to the bottom and easily cover the legs without getting paint all over your floor. Because these two pieces were a mix of different colours of wood, I wanted to give them a base coat that was really textured. So I used the Ferny Paint Texture Medium in Chunky, along with some of this brown emulsion based paint and mixed it together to create a really chunky effect. This is our alternative to salt wash. It's a great base for creating texture and I've been using it for years in my projects. Not only does it help create a really textured finish, but it also helps your paint dry rock hard and adhere to any slick surfaces much better. I mixed it up so it was super chunky and then I just brushed it all over the piece and then dabbed it over to create lots of great peaks. I was really globbing the paint on there to create lots of great texture and because it was so thick sometimes it can take a little bit of extra time for your paint to dry but this great sun that we were having helped it dry in no time. Thank you. 
Here you can see I'm just dabbing on the paint and creating lots of great peaks and texture. This doesn't just only work on furniture, it's perfect for home decor, creating stone type finishes, all sorts of great creative projects. If you're interested in this texture medium or any of the other products that we use, do head over to the fernypaint.co.uk website where you can find the texture medium and all the other great products that we have to offer. It's a great way of being able to support us and support our channel so that we can create lots more content in future. Whilst it was drying, we took the dogs for a walk and then we came back and it was completely dry and this is how it looks. To achieve the types of distress finish that I want, I'm going to be using this oil-based paint. Now I'm moving towards more of a natural based paint and that's definitely something that the Fernie paint range will be, but to be able to use the types of distress finishes that I want on this piece, I had to use an oil-based finish. This cabinet I decided to paint white, but I've done lots of versions of these in the past and black always sells really well for me. So instead of doing the brown textured finish, I would normally do an off-white textured finish with then a black coat on top. And that's another good option. With this type of paint, you want to use a disposable brush because really it's not going to be easy to clean it out, which is another disadvantage of using these oil-based paints. Once it was fully painted, it was looking very stark and very white, but starting to go in the right direction of what I was looking for. Unfortunately, again, with this being an oil-based product, the drying time is a lot longer than a water-based product, but once it was finally dry, it was time to move on to the extreme distressing. For this piece, I'm actually using a blowtorch, yes, a blowtorch, to distress it. Because the paint is flammable, when you distress it with a blowtorch, it will actually bubble up. And it will bubble and then it will settle down and it creates a really, truly, authentically looking old aged finish. It takes a little bit of extra time, but all I do is use a low heat, waft it over the paint all over and it will create lots of different bubbles and finishes that will then settle down and create a slightly different effect to crazing and crackling. Here you can hopefully just see that that paint just underneath the nozzle is fizzing as it gets heated up and then it very calmly settles back down and it just creates a really original looking type of aged finish. Now each of these oil-based paints does tend to behave slightly differently and in this case in some areas it was actually burning the paint and turning it into a black colour. Now I didn't mind that too much because it was all adding to the sense of age and variation in tone and I would have distressed it and aged it in those areas anyway. Thank you. 
I continue to work my way over the whole piece and here you can see I've done the bottom two thirds and not the left hand side and you can really see the stark difference in colour and age. And then finally, after quite some time, the whole thing has been completely distressed and this is how it looks. The next process is to distress this piece. So because we have so much texture from that brown undertone, I want to bring some of that back. And also because we burnt quite a bit of this paint, it will flake off and chip off as well. So I went at it with 120 grit sandpaper and sanded the whole thing. I'm sure some people will have opinions about painting things with the drawers in, but for me, I find it so much easier. It is a little bit difficult to get them out once you've painted them, but they do normally pop out once you give them a good whack. Next, I give them a treatment with the orbital sander. Again, I like to sand all of the edges nice and smooth so that they really easily uh, open and close. And then I also add a little bit of soap on the edges as well, which not only distresses the black finish on the edges and makes it look a bit older, but it also just helps the drawers not stick together and smoothly slide in and out. Because the texture medium is so thick, it does also act as a filler. And so it filled the holes on the handles on the front of the cabinet and also on these little drawers. So I re-drilled them just roughly where they were with the drill to reopen them and then put these knobs on as well. At this point, it was beginning to look a little bit too stark, the contrast between the brown and the white, and it was looking a little bit cheater to me. So I decided to apply a very light coat of white paint all over the piece again, not fully coating it, just roughly coating it over so that I could get a bit more of an even tone and those contrasts weren't so great. It's all trial and error, and as you get more experienced with painting, I have found that you instantly know what a piece is needing in order to make it what you want it to be. So I left that to dry overnight and then it was back to finish this piece off. Now that it was completely painted white again, I decided to distress it with this paint scraper. I've used this before and it does help to create a slightly different chippy effect that works really well with the textured medium. I ran it over all of the surfaces, chipping off some of the paint in quite a random way just to create an authentic finish that was less so cheetah than I had before. This was actually super quick and probably took no more than 10 minutes to do the whole cabinet. I ran it over each drawer and just very loosely applied a little bit of pressure and that was all it needed. All the texture was kept there, but some of those peaks were gripped and that allowed it to create this chippy finish. 
Once I'd done that all over, it was time to add the labels. I always have a good stash and these two are always essential to include on my pieces. I apply a bit of PVA glue on the back and then I stick them in place. I then gave them a light sanding so that they didn't look too new. This piece was super heavy and it was one of the many, many pieces that we took with us to the antiques market that we did. And here it is all set up at the market. This was a real special piece and a real showstopper. People stopped and had a good look at it, but unfortunately it didn't sell on that day. So we had the job of bringing it back home and we sold it to a good antique dealer friend of ours. I'm really pleased with how this finish came out and I think that it looks really antique and original for the age of this piece. I totally imagine it sitting in some sort of chemist shop in the old back end of London being used to serve all of the people with their ailments. And I think it's a great showstopper for any modern home as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments box below. I hope you like how this project turned out. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave for lots more projects just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.